Hey, Wood Turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. Welcome to my shop. I've been cleaning up out back and I find all kinds of great little projects that I should be finishing up. One is glassware. Yep, my daughter has a business where she acid etches glass. And take a look here. She she etched a fleur de lis on this one. You can see that, yeah. Well, and that's her copyright of fleur de lis. Well, it's it's missing something. So let's turn a base for it. You want to know how? <laughs> All you gotta do is watch. To turn a base, we're actually going to start bottoms up. I got a piece of desert on wood somebody saw, sent me and I put it onto a face block. Now I'm going to true it up and I'm going to put a receiver in the bottom of it. Receiver so and I can turn it around and put it on spigot jaws to shape the bottom and put the, the socket. We're going to do the base, then we'll do a little spindle, then we'll do a cradle to hold the cup. Then we'll put them all together. I've got some desert ironwood for the first two pieces and a piece of uh, either figured coca bolo or black wood for the cap on the top. Then we'll put it all together. I think you're going to like this project. It'll be the toast of the town. Pun intended. I just checked my spigot jaws and the best width for me to open up inside the spigot jaws is about right here. So I'm pull a reference mark. Then I'm going to go in, and I just glued this up about a 15 minutes ago. So we're going to do it gently. I'm going to put a receiver in here to hold it on. Using a little multi-tool. This is going to be my only opportunity to get access to this bottle. So I'm going to clean this up. And the sidewalls, while we have it here, Scrape up on them, that bottom a little bit. This desert iron was fairly thick, or dense, pardon me. Now I have that in a position where I want to go ahead and do a little quick sanding on it and put some CA finish on it. You're probably saying, uh, why did he jump to the CA finish? Well, alcohol. This is going to be used in about and around alcohol. And the most durable finish I have for that is CA. And it takes that much to put an awesome finish on the bottom of this piece. Since I'm going to do a couple of these, at least two, I'm going to take it off the glue block right now. There. That is some dense wood. Then I'm going to true my glue box block up again and get it ready. The first time I have a little bit of a break, I'm going to glue up a replacement piece. Put that in mind. Got 
Got to make sure that is flat straight across. There we go. Ready for the next piece. The next move takes place on a set of spigot jaws. I have the, pro the uh, recess on the bottom of the piece. That's what it's going to go right there. Now, you may want to protect the spigot jaws with a little piece of blue tape or something to keep from gouging up the bottom of it. If you have not rounded them off and got them in good shape, they'll probably cause a problem. Now when I flipped it over, I found that that is a flaw in the wood and that's got to go away. But I've also got to shape this slightly and i got to remember I have that recess in there. So we crank it back up again. Hard, dense wood like this, we're going to spin up real high. Every little else changes. In order to make the cuts, we're going to read a bet. We're going to go negative. Read a bevel. Slice on through. I had that saw cut in there, so I've got to see if it. Cut. Nope, it didn't go away yet. I need to get another sixteenth out, or remediate that somehow. But for this piece, let's get rid of it. Again, close the flute. Straight up and down. Read the flute. Open it up. This stuff cuts like beauty. All right, again. Close the flute straight up and down. Read the flute. Open it up to make the cut. See it? Close the flute. Read the flute. Swing the handle to make the arc. And we need a little bit of a flat spot to park that finial, that stem on. We're again in really good shape. I'm going to sand before we do the next step. And once again, after sanding. I'm going to go ahead and put a little pre-coat of CA on this. That's going to give me a little bit of something to start with on the base. I need a tenon on each end of this and that tenon is going to be based upon that quarter inch that I just left allowed uh, in the bottom of that other piece. So I'm going to go to my open end wrenches. I'll pull my quarter and that's where I'm going to put the, the tenon in the width down on this end. Now I can't push that bit, that wrench on the big fat end like this. So I'm going to crank the speed up, get where I want it at. Get close and then come in with my wrench. Where I need to be, I've got a 
little ridge left in there. I'm going to go clean them up. This end is ready, but I don't think I want that sharp to go up against it, so I'll round that out a little bitty bit. I'm going to go down here and do it on the drive end. Now why not do the drive end first? Because if this breaks, I'll lost. I've lost it. Again, get close. I'm doing a little light undercut on this end. And now I'm going to clean up that sharp corner there. Then bring up the wrench. It doesn't hurt every once in a while to touch up that sharp edge on top of that wrench. Bear down on the bottom. That's it. I'm going to go back in here now and clean up a few little marks left down in there. Not a lot. Remember, I have a little holiday here and a little holiday here. It wouldn't hurt while I'm still spinning. One touch of CA. Then we're going to part it off. One of these will have to be sanded out. So I'm going to pick the one over here to part off. And I'll have to saw this one off, clean up that little nub, and this is ready to go into my piece. For a status, where are we? We have our base, we have our first piece size to go onto our base. So now we have the first two parts of the stem for the champagne glass or the wine glass. I left it heavy. Champagne glass, you can do a long tapered flute. For a wine glass or a goblet, you want to be a little heavier. And our little detail down there looks like a, a break. You can see it, and that's what we were looking for. It's time to go to the next step. This is a chunk of Coca Bolo. Um, it's dark and heavy, it's going to look really good against the uh, ironwood. I'm going to drill a hole. It's on a glue block. I'm going to drill a hole down through the center of it. And that's going to be the mounting reference everything else hole that we're going to use to line this piece up. That'll knock off the burned material. Now we're ready to turn this piece. That again was a quarter inch Forstner bit. I'm going to get that out the way. Now this, I'm using some glasses I bought from craft supplies from several years ago. Maybe seven or eight, nine years ago. Um, they do not have the stem 
and the bottom of the glass. See it's been rounded off? That's key for what we want to do here. If the stem is still there, you've got a problem you got to get rid of the stem. A wire saw, a tub of water, and uh, a lot of patience is in store. What I do now is start making a pocket for that base to fit in. Now, it's a little bit high. it seems like a pain but you have to stop occasionally and check it and you don't want just the outside edge rubbing way out here you need to have a good smooth pocket so you get a good setting when you put the adhesive on because you're going to set these with a 6,000 grade adhesive clean it up a little bit Generally, I was happy with that shape. Now, now I'm not deep enough because I've got a gap up here. Let's see if I can get you where you can see that. You see the little gap around the top? So that's it's a trial and error fit don't fit type thing. We're almost there. When I have a good pocket, when I have a good pocket for that to fit in, then I'm okay. I need enough of a pocket that'll hold the adhesive and grab the cup. But I don't want the adhesive all over the top edge. So that's got to be a good fit. Now, considering what I have, I'm going to shape the outside, leaving a little bit of an edge here and trying to conform to that shape. I want that edge to be a little bit smaller. There we are. We want to have a good angle to this and a good curve to it to make it blend to the cup. Still need to be on that glue block so I can't knock it off. But check your thickness occasionally. If you're getting too fat and too heavy, you want to take it down some.
Still got room to fine tune it. We're going to play with that shape until we get right on the money. I have it to a point that I'm happy. Do you see this in the inside? I forgot to explain that to you. I put some ridges so the epoxy or the adhesive has something to bind into when it's on the inside here. Just surface grooves. Nothing too major. Then we sand this out and 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 start to finish. We start to finish because we'll be jam chucking this to finish the bottom off. Ooh, forgot. I got the speed way up there. Let's bring the speed down a little bit so it sands better. Once I have it sanded out, again the suit CA comes on here. Put a little basic finish on it. That'll wick off in about 30 seconds or so, especially in the South Louisiana humidity. And it's rained all day, so the humidity in here has got to be 80-90% right now. This is going to give us a piece that I can work with. See right now it's touchable. A piece I can work with almost immediately. Uh, the key to I say almost immediately is I'm going to want to turn this around before I do. I'm going to buff a little bit of that glue just to get to where I've got a better base. And that was 1500 paper just to knock to finish off the, the little bit of the irregularities okay now to turn it around to turn around I need to take it off here and remember I have a hole all the way through it so I'm going to go about a quarter inch past that end past where I brought it down and I'm going to ease it off See, there's my quarter inch hole. Now, this is of no use to me, except it's a glue block with a chunk of wood on it. So again, while I have it in here, Get it cleaned up and ready to be used again for a jam chuck. It's too short for my next operation. But it's still, I mean a glue block. It's still good for a glue block. The next step requires jam chucking. I don't ha have a lot to jam chuck on. Now I could put it over a piece bring up a soft touch, put it in the center, and shape to that. That'll work great. I could put it over a piece, I could put it in a receiver, I could put a receiver and jam it into a receiver, and I'd have a pretty good grab there. I'm going to opt for the um, putting it in a in between centers. Let me rig this up for you. Now I want to put it in place, but I had a little overage. See the little overage right around it? All right. I want to get that out the way because it's just going to fracture and cause me a problem. So I take my handy dandy pocket knife, take it out the way, bring this down to it and bring up a soft touch. Push right on the center. Look how nice and true it turns right off the bat. You see that? Now I have a stem that's going to fit underneath here. And that stem's got a flat spot on the end of it. So it's looking for a flat spot over here. Let me back up and show you something. It's almost the right size. 
isn't it? Man, my good. Oh, I mean, uh, no, I got, boy, I got lucky. Um, but we're going to do that again. Put it in there. Kind of happy with the way it's running. It was running better, much truer when we first chucked it up. Okay, now, we're running true. I need that flat spot again. So what I'm going to do is put it back on there using that soft touch to hold the piece. Here's the deal. That's not going to work. Let, let's buy some insurance. Take some regular blue painter's tape. So I'm not doing a whole lot to it, right? I'll put a little blue painter's tape on it. There. Now, do you feel better about it? I feel better about it. And it's important that I feel better about it. That was on off switch. Now, I've got the remote back. Back up speed. We're not maxed out, we're at about 7 8 speed. Easy. Easy. That was planning. That will fit there. Just about perfect. Now you know what caps this all off? I can glue this where it's at. Bring my, me back up so you can see this. I want to bring up my soft touch, get it in range. I'm going to put some medium thick there, put this in place, bring the soft touch up to make contact, and I will, it will all be running true. I'm going to let it cure, and then I can go ahead and do a little touch up sanding and a little touch up finishing. Isn't it nice when it all works out? I glued up the, the bottom, lined it up, now I'm gluing up the top. There it is. Bring this up, do a little quick spin. See if I need to do any little, tiny bit of alignment. Oh yeah, I like all that. Then you look for glue overages. Because glue's heavy and hard to cut off. So you don't want a lot of it to work on too later with sanding. Now, I could do that Alakazam or voila thing and we are ready. Now I gotta go find that 600 adhesive. Now I removed the tape and Went ahead and put another coat on. I brushed it out, buffed it out a little bit. It'll still get another coat or two before I wrap it up. And then I'll put it on with some C6000 glue. I'll get out the arts and crafts department at Walmart because the tube I have here went solid. There you have it. A nice little afternoon project. Now once you set up, do two bases, do two stems, do two sockets and then put them together and put the finish on. That way while you're into the bases they'll look alike, the stems will look alike, the sockets will look alike, 
and you'll have two glasses that look alike. Now you might get a little more braver than I am, because I'm a chicken, and go for a set of four. But do you know that two makes a real nice anniversary present, or a wedding present, or a present, just two. Because there's nothing more comfy than just having a cup of wine with someone you love. Well, there is. It's a joint. It's nice, rich ice cream. Oh, i got to go back to eating ice cream again. That's all there is to it. Hey, I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and thanks for joining today as we've been making shavings. I'll see you soon. You take care now. Be safe in that shop. Spum.